Okay. Okay, this might be better. Sorry about that. I had some troubles with my OBS setup and now I switched to a different setup. So give me just one moment, I'll come. Okay, I'll try switching off my camera just so that um, it's a bit nicer. Right, never mind. Okay. So let's uh let's start this stream finally. Sorry about the delay. Um, right, so today we're going to be solving the um, rail and cipher. Have I, has the screen frozen now? It's only frozen here. Okay. Okay. So, uh, rail fence, rail fence cipher. This is the exercise that we're going to be solving today um, on the exercise on Python track. And yeah, let's just uh, go. Let's start. Let's uh, but not lose any more time. So let's start with the rail fence cipher. I'm going to read the instructions first. So uh, the task is to implement encoding and decoding for the rail fence cipher. And it says that the rail fence cipher is a form of transposition cipher that gets its name from the way in which it's encoded. It was already used by the ancient Greeks. Okay. Um, the message is written downwards on successive rails. So we can see them here, I guess, uh, or an imaginary fence, then moving up when we get to the bottom, like a zigzag. So here we have W, E, A, R, E, D, I. That's how we read it, I guess. Um, so for example, using three rails and the message we are discovered flee at once, we write out we are discovered flee at once. Right, so this means that we, we write it like this along the fence, so to speak, and then we read it off like this, and I guess this is just sequential starting from the first row, W-E-C-R-L, W-E-C-R-L, yeah, that's right. And we keep on going and we read sequentially by rows. Um, right, and then to to decrypt the message, so, so to, to decrypt the encrypted message, um, we take the zigzag shape, um, and fill the ciphertext along the rows. Right, so when we have an encrypted message, we first need to write it row by row sequentially. Yeah, 
and then yeah second row and then the last row here and now you read along the zigzag shape to read the original message right so so once we fill that in the encrypted message we we read it again in a zigzag shape to decrypt it and um yeah i guess we have a couple of repeating patterns here we're moving along the zigzag shape like this um right uh or we move along sequentially row by row and i guess depending on whether we are deciphering or ciphering something we either read or write okay sounds uh sounds good sounds understandable uh let's then uh, let's then jump to the code and let's see we have uh the file where we're gonna do the implementation and then also we have a rail fence cipher test file where we have the the files the tests and yeah so we actually we have quite there are not a, not a lot of tests here so i guess we can uh, yeah we can run them maybe one by one even I can run them here directly from VS Code, actually. So if I run the first one, we get a failure, of course. And um, this is because we haven't implemented anything yet. So uh, what do we get? A none is an instance of the first argument is not a string. Of course, it's not going to work. Uh, let's just focus on what the test says. So the test says that we should call the encode function with a, with this string given. And two, what is two? Rails, aha, uh -huh. okay, so it's number of rails. So when we, if we go back here, it's number of rails right here in the fence. So we have two here, and given the input string like this and the number of rails is two, we expect this to be the encoded message. Okay, which means we need to now first deal with uh, encoding algorithm, which is the method encode here. Okay. Um, so let's think about this now. Um, hmm. So we would maybe have, so each each of these um, rails would be an array, right? And then when it comes to the second one, it would be another array. So we can actually create a 2D array, like two-dimensional array, or uh, or a list, a li list of lists, pretty much. In which case, if for we have two rails, we would have two lists within a list. Um. Yeah. And then we would be filling in that string that we we have as input. We would be filling it uh, along the zigzag shape, which in this case, it would be much simpler because you have just two two lists. But we need to generalize it as well. Um, okay. Okay. So how do we construct a list of lists? Maybe we should do a list comprehension of, or something. Should we call this fence just to make this semantic according to the description of the of the problem yeah let's call it fence so we have a list comprehension for one single rail what would we be doing 
No, we would actually, another thing is that we would need each, each list uh, should actually have the number of elements that is, that is equal to the input string, I guess. Yeah, because you always need to, yeah, you need to shift always by one to the right when you, when you have this fence. So the fence length, so to speak, is always or should be, I think, always equal to the to the input string. Right. Uh, let's say rail length is equal to length of the message. Yeah. Uh, a single single rail would be like if you type in none or uh, character and message that means that we would get a list of nuns pretty much and that will be a single rail. Right. And we need to do this a couple of times, right? So we need to do this as many times as we have um, rails in the fence. And that is in this input argument rails. So should we do Uh, let's, let's think about this. Maybe a new function like create rail given the rail length. So that would be, we would return this for, for, just say, let's say N in um, range of ray length. Maybe that, and then in the fence we will have create rail of rail length. For and in range of rails. I think that should do work. That should give us this two-dimensional array, I guess. Yeah. I don't know, maybe we can print this out just to see what we get. I don't know if we'll get it here if we run the test. Uh, we don't get the output here, I guess. Okay. Um, maybe we can try debugging it. Let's 
So step. Fence. Now we can see that we have, yeah, we have two rows, right? And then each row has a certain number of none values. And I guess that's, yeah, it's from zero to 17, so 18 of them, which makes sense because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. We have 19 here. So why did we get 18 of them? Range. Let's um, let's start the debugger again. Uh, where is the test? Here. Ray length is nine. Is it nine, really? So why is it nine? Oh, message is exercises. Hold on. Okay, so we are not actually starting this first test. We are, <laughs> yeah, right. We're starting the this one first because they're not ordered in the same way as in this file. So I was looking at the wrong test actually. Let's uh, let's start looking at the correct one then. Uh, here encode with two rails okay yeah rail length is 18 and then the length of each list is 18 as well. That's good. That's good. Okay, let's stop debugging. I think we're good with that. So now what we want to do um, to actually decipher things or no, to, to, to encode it, we, we should uh, write along the zigzag shape, right? So we have uh, we we have it going like this, if there are two rails. So what we need to do is actually shuffle always between the rails for each character. So we need to go like rail one, rail two, rail one, rail two, rail one, rail two. Uh, but we also need to shift the the index of the array each time we we shuffle the rail uh, I guess and then 
the same if we have three of them, right? We need to go rail one, rail two, rail three, and then rail two, rail one, two, three, two, one, or, or zero because it's zero index. So zero, one, two, one, zero, one, two, one, zero, and so on. Um, so for, for three of them, we will go like zero, one, two, one zero one two and so on so i'm thinking we should have some kind of an array that will represent this shifting between the rails in order like this but it would so we need to build out the array which would represent a pattern that when when we reach the end of it we we go back to the beginning of that array so that we kind of mimic this the the, the circular pattern all the time so here we would have like zero one two uh, zero one two one zero one two one zero one two one zero one and you see that so if we have an array like this and we just make it go in circles we we can we have that um, counter or iterator that we can use and that's one dimension of that zigzag zigzag shape i guess so yeah let's um let's try to build that out um I'm gonna say like uh, rail iterator or, or maybe fence, fence iterator. Just shorten it like this. So what do we need? Uh, so this kind of depends on the on the number of rails, I guess. So we have three rails, we would say uh, we need to have a list of um, four range of zero to rails that would be zero one two this part but then we will have a we would need a one again what if we have a longer one what if we have like zero one two three and then it's two one so we would need two one yeah so can we go somehow can we build an array in the reverse somehow? Let's just Google this. Um, Python build array in reverse. Um, Reversing a list. I think we have the reverse method. Oh, sorry. This is an old thread. Uh, 
reversed but we don't need the we don't need the last and the first element right because we need to do one so we would be doing something like this concatenating uh concatenating it like this yeah that will result in what we want i guess mm -hmm. Uh, let's say this is rails um, counter not counter counter is like an integer like this and then fence iterator would be rails list plus then we take rails list of um, minus one. Oh yeah maybe you can use slicing python slice Mm, let me just uh, remind myself how to do slicing. Yeah, we can do that. I think we can use negative numbers here. Can we? I think we should. Yeah, like this. So, should we type this out somehow? So, here we have like uh, zero, one, two, three, right? And we want to put this in our list. And we can do a slice like this. This is probably reversed. Yeah. But we can also define like ranges. We want to go from what if one here? One zero. One zero. So we want to go from the list length minus one, which would be one, two, three here, uh, or the index, actually the index, right? Two, one, zero. And then we will go to one. Oh, but it's inclusive, exclusive on the and index, right. And then we will get 2, 1, which is probably what we need. 2, 1. Yeah. So the length of the list minus 2. Yeah, length of the list minus two, which is a, which is equal to rails. Two 
zero. I guess that's what we would need. Let's see what we built out using this notation right here. So if we debug it, Now we got some errors. Oh, because this is not good. N for N in range. Right. And now I got outside because I didn't put something else here. Let's um, redo this. Zero one. Rails list is zero one. Yeah, that's right, because yeah, we, we have two elements, so I guess this is correct. Because we would go zero one zero one zero one all the time. And now in order to actually go it go in circles pretty much, so zero one zero one zero one, or if we would have three elements we will have we want to go one or zero one two one zero, one two one zero, and so on. We would need to kind of circle around, and I think we have in Python something, some library called uh, iter tools, like for iteration. And yeah, we do have like cycle function, which would go, which would do exactly that. So like you go A B C D A B C D like. As soon as the iterator reaches the, the end, it will start from the beginning. Then that's what I was aiming at all along. So we would need to do like cycle of of this whole thing pretty much. But we need to import it. Cycle. Right. Um so we now have that iterator. Okay, and um, so now we have the iterator which will go between the rails all the time. It will go like zero one zero one zero one or zero one two one zero one two one zero exactly what we need. But we need another kind of loop which will increment the index of the list. Um, so let's see. Let's let's do a for loop, which will say for. Let's call it slot in. range of message not a range of message would it be range of message yeah I guess so but then it's a character not range we don't need range do we need an index right an index of the character so we need to use enumerate message that way we get both the index and the character and now we can do 
So now for each character, we need to choose which rail we want to go in. And we start with the first one. Uh, so the index for that is here. We have an iterator. We did, we kind of created an iterator using the cycle function call. And that means that we can use next on it to get the next one. Um, so that would give us the fence index. And yeah, so now we have the fence index. And we have the fence which we created already. Um, which gives us a rail, right? And then for that rail, we put in the appropriate index, we put the character. I guess that should actually make us fill in those characters in the appropriate rail and the appropriate slot in the rail. Okay. And uh, let's see now. Mm. So now what we do in order to get the ciphered string, we should read it along the rows. So and we we should read along the fence pretty much along the rows. So we will probably say for rail in fence, and then for yeah for character in rail. And then we should check whether, yeah, because we have we have initialized all the rails to none first, and then just use this loop to fill in the correct slots in each rail. We should check if it's not none. And if it's not none, that means that there is a char there that we need to kind of use to build up the, the resulting array. So I guess we can say that cipher here is an empty list. List we start with that, and then we can do cipher. Uh, is cipher plus? So we we kind of concatenate, or can we just use an append? Cipher append, yeah, character, but only if it's not, if the char is not none. Yeah, and now we can try returning that cipher. Let's see, let's see what we get. Mm. Okay, we get a failure for some reason. Oh, because we've built a, uh, a list and not a string. I should have built a string actually. Um, yeah, I should have done that. So cipher is cipher plus char. Maybe that should work. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. We get the first test case. 
passing and I think we should get all of the encode functions passing right now. Let's try them. Yeah, this one with three rails and this test case also with four rails. So, right, so the encode function is now working. Uh, now we have the decode with three rails, which will of course fail because we haven't implemented the, the decode function, which we can do now. And I think it's very similar because we we have that zigzag pattern as well. But the, the difference is that now we should, because we first, in the first one, when we were uh, like encoding it to, to a cipher, we were writing the string along the zigzag shape shape um, and reading sequentially and here we need to fill it in uh, sequentially and and then read along the zigzag shape to to decipher it so it's like an inverse it's the same movement pattern but it's but it's the, a different operation. So they're switched around. So it is kind of different as well to decrypt it. Okay, let's, let's start with, how will we know if we are moving sequentially, how will we know in which places we need to put in the characters? And I think one way would be maybe to use the same pattern of filling in along the zigzag shape to just like mark mark the appropriate locations as slots with, where we we can just then fill in the characters from from the string so like where the question marks are here right First, I would go along the zigzag shape using the same pattern as we did now, now for the encode function. And I would put in something like, I don't know, some kind of marker, like, like true, like value true, maybe. And then once I did that, then I would go sequentially and just instead of markers true i would just put in character by character along the rows that's how i would fill it in and then i would like read it along the zigzag shape but we can deal with that later so now yeah let's do that let's let's do the decode function now and i can maybe try refactoring it later because there's a there's a lot here that can just be reused, I guess, because we have the rail length, we have the fence, which is the same, the rails list, like everything is the same pretty much up to this point. So should we... Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe I should just write a function that does this. Like um, first, like I don't know, prepare fence or <laughs> mm. let's see this part. Create fence and we would just pick this up, put 
put it here. Array length, right? Create fence of like, then array length would be here, and then the number of rails would be here. Uh, yeah. You can just say create fence. Uh, length of message and then rails and that we would use to build the fence and then we would have a, a create fence iterator which would depend on the rails i guess and so this we could put right here oh, like this okay like this and now we can just run those tests again and it's failing, of course, because I missed something. Message is not defined, right? So here, yeah, we don't need real length because we're passing it in as an argument. And again, it's failing. Again, I'm missing something. None type object is not subscriptable. Oh, because I haven't returned the fence from this function, right? Can try again. Okay, now it's passing. Uh, this test case passing, this test case right here passing, and this one is failing, of course. Okay, uh, we can remove that and we can do pretty much the same thing in the decode function right here uh, this is encoded message okay and then we have this guy right here which we want to pretty much reuse um, but I'll just copy paste it for now let's see how it differs later then we can refactor so here we're gonna say encoded message and here but we we don't wanna yeah, here we don't want to put the char of the decoded message because remember we just want to put markers here so I'm going to put true, like I said. Um, right. Then I don't need that char. Um, okay. So now hopefully we have something like this. We don't have question marks, but we have the, the the value true and now we need to fill in those spots with what is in the encode message but moving sequentially uh, so like oh so we need to
we need to iterate again along the fence. So we need we need this, I guess. We need this uh, if char, and this is like I'll call it a char, like or an element, because it doesn't necessarily have to be a char. If element is true. That we that means that we need to put something in that spot in the in the fence, but we need to index it. So I guess like this. rail enumerate rail uh, yeah so rail of this index oh but we need to go through the message again yeah we need to go through the message and can we make an iterator out of the message string Coded message like this. Um, and also, like code stream, let's call it. And then here we can put the next character from the code stream. Would that work? I think it should. I think it should. Um, yeah, let's assume that this would work. So now we filled in row by row everything like this. And now to to kind of decipher it, right? We we have this right now. So to decipher it, we need to again like go along the zigzag shape and just read it out like build out a resulting string going character by character along the zigzag shape okay um which is kind of similar to what we already did in here yeah maybe yeah Yeah, so for hmm. so we would need to move Yeah, we would probably need to do something like this. I mean, we're not using the char in the encoded message, but we still need like to move as many 
slots as we have characters in the encoded message. I mean, we could have also used the range function and take the length of the encoded message. So like message length. Oh, or they, we called it real length before. Like this, yeah, okay, uh, real length. Oh, I have my battery will gonna, it's gonna die on me. Hold on. Okay. Mm, so cr we should iterate now uh, because rail index hold on I need to think a bit more here um, I just said like for index in range of rail length that will go from zero to like rail length minus one pretty much which is an index um, but we need to also really be careful because we have already used the fence iterator once we've been calling next on it so it's not going to start from the very start which we actually need so just for the sake of simplicity, I might just call another create fence iterator again, just to reinitialize it. Yeah. Um, so I then say fence index like we had before. I think we need, we can just copy paste this. Rail. And then now we have the rail index. But we need to build out the resulting deciphered string. So it's like, um, how should I call it? Um, let's decode it or something. <laughs> Decoded uh, is an empty string for now. And then here, we do it like this to because we're moving along the zigzag shape, we're adding characters to the resulting decoded string. And that should theoretically be it. Uh, let's, let's see if that works. And we can think about refactoring it as well. Um, all right, wow, this was, okay. So this passed from the first try. Okay, we keep on moving, testing all of them. And yeah, now we have all the test cases passing. Cool. Um, what we can do now is because I can see that this part right here and this part right here are very similar. 
so I can create another method that will do this and I can call it like fill zigzag <laughs> something like that and they say message no not message though because I want it in this case I want it to fill it with the value true but here it's being filled with char that go comes from the message itself Yep, so I cannot do that. Um, What I could do is just this part. Like if I put fence here and iterator here. Or, now that I think about it, could I maybe... Yeah, maybe I can just construct an array, an array with none or true. Hold on, true. Yeah, maybe we should do that. So if I have a, like an array. an array array of length like this Yeah, then I can have like two fill and if say zigzag fill, fill zigzag, I can do fence. So 
something like this, maybe. Take that, put it here. this like this here I would call this function like that and then to fill would be like message and I would remove this so to make this shorter If I run this test case, it will pass these three with, with the encode function, right? And then here, I constructed an array of true values, which I'm using, I'm moving along the zigzag shape to, to fill in true markers. And hopefully I can just remove this and run the test cases yeah if I run all of them see they're still passing so now I refactored this chunk of the code which is which was common between encode and decode and of course I mean I could just keep on going and try to refactor the rest here as well I mean probably now that I'm seeing this I'm operating on a lot of kind of I, I should kind of encapsulate the data somehow and um, create a class of some sorts to encapsulate all of this data and then create methods that would operate on that data. I think that would probably end up with a much cleaner solution as well. I would try to kind of eliminate some of this repetitive stuff because we have the zigzag pattern and then we are either reading along it alongside of it or we are we are writing into it or we are moving sequentially right and either we are reading or writing so probably i would try to factor out somehow the operation from the movement uh, pattern so yeah but i'm gonna stop here just because we're kind of out of time and i had problems in the beginning with like technical issues where where the the screen was blurry sorry about that i don't know how that happened so i needed to switch to a different setup um but yeah thank you very much for watching and uh, until next time bye